In order to replace the renowned P-51 Mustang, a fighter that escorted B-17 flying fortresses to strike German and Japanese strongholds, the U.S. Air Force created the XF-88 project after World War II. To satisfy USAF objectives, the XF-88 was heavily modified to make it quick and capable of engaging in aerial combat. It was equipped with afterburning engines and an Ellison XT-38 experimental turboprop installed in the nose. Nevertheless, it was cancelled due to financial constraints and a decline in interest in high-speed propellers, and mass manufacturing was never achieved. Both the production F-101 and the experimental XF-88 pushed the boundaries of aircraft that could break the Mach 1 barrier, and the XF-88 was revived after the Korean War with the F-101 Voodoo, a larger version that suited modern Air Force standards. The XF-88 was developed in response to the U.S. Air Force's need for a successor for the P-51 Mustang, following World War II. With a fighting radius of 900 miles, this long-range penetration fighter was intended to handle escorting bombers like the B-36. A number of alternatives were put up, however none of them were accepted. In one attempt, modified bombers were used to tow P-80 and P-84 escorts in order to increase their airtime and range. Prototypes with more fuel capacity, such as the XP-81 and XP-83, had early promise, but this proved impracticable for them. Under the direction of Chief Aerodynamics Dave Lewis, McDonnell Aircraft Corporation started developing a new prototype, the Model 36, in 1946. On June 20, 1946, the deal was signed, assigning the business the responsibility of manufacturing two test models for the U.S. Air Force, which were designated XP-88. The objective was to design a novel aircraft that could combat hostile planes and ground targets while operating deep into enemy territory, a concept known as the penetration fighter. The prototype was also supposed to include a turbojet engine, according to the Air Force. Initially intended to have straight wings and a V-shaped tail, the XP-88 was modified in the wind tunnel to address aerodynamic concerns. The classic tailplane arrangement was added, and the front end of the air intake was swapped out for a sweeping design. After receiving orders from the Air Force, McDonnell proceeded with two prototypes, which were delivered at Moroc Army Airfield in Southern California in October 1948. The prototypes had a pressurized cockpit with an ejection seat for the pilot and a low to mid-mounted wing that was swept to 35 degrees. The Voodoo's short nose's 6.20mm M39 guns served as the offensive armament. They lacked radar. Underneath the rear fuselage, air intakes, wing roots, and jet pipes fed the Westinghouse J-34 turbojet engines. Powered by twin Westinghouse J-34 engines, the XF-88 took off for the first time in 1948 at Morock Field. It was underpowered, with a peak speed of 641 miles per hour, falling short of USAF specifications despite its first performance. With the addition of twin XJ-34 WE-15 engines and more fuel capacity, the initial prototype saw a little performance gain but an increase in fuel consumption. When the second prototype, XF-88A, with afterburning J-3422 engines was shown in April 1949, the peak speed was increased to 700 miles per hour at 20,000 feet. But with a speed differential of about 60 miles per hour, this improved speed came at the expense of a reduced range and greater fuel consumption. The Air Force's penetration fighter competition was won by North American, and McDonald was forced to enter the XF-88A. When the F-86 Sabre went into production, the improved XF-93A was the aircraft of choice. August 1950 saw the termination of the XF-88 project due to funding constraints and shifting USAF priorities. All the while, 
McDonnell made internal modifications to the XF88 design even after losing the manufacturing contract. The second prototype was converted into the XF88B, a high-speed propeller research aircraft, at the request of the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. Both the Air Force and the Navy collaborated to create this project. On April 14, 1953, the NACA Aeronautical Laboratory in Hampton, Virginia, conducted a flight test of the XF-88B. It was the first airplane with propellers to reach altitudes somewhat higher than Mach 1.0. The two-seat XF-88 that McDonnell had planned, along with naval and reconnaissance versions, was shelved in 1958, when USAF objectives shifted away from high-speed propellers during the Korean War. The work was shelved, but the Forgotten War's fighting experience resulted in new requirements for long-range fighter aircraft. The troubled development cycle was concluded in the third iteration when the F-101 Voodoo, a larger version of the XF-88, satisfied new specifications. A new operational need for an upgraded XF-88 was released by the USAF in 1951. The aircraft changed from being intended as a penetrating fighter to a fighter bomber equipped with nuclear weapons. Strategic fighters like the F-101 Voodoo were built to carry and deliver nuclear warheads. The F-101 Voodoo, which could carry three times the fuel load of the XF-88, won the offer in May 1951. It had a more potent Pratt & Whitney J-57 turbojet engine which meant that engine bays and intakes needed to be changed to provide the right amount of airflow. USAF authorities created the F-101 Voodoo with the goal of reducing nose pitching and increasing aerodynamic efficiency. It was armed with one Mark 7 hydrogen bomb, four 20mm M39 guns, and an aesthetically pleasing T-tail. After the design was accepted, a 1953 order for 29 planes was placed. It was believed that the F-101 was an altered form of the XF-88, which was in the testing phase. On September 29, 1954, the aircraft conducted its first flight, hitting a speed of 597 miles per hour at a height of 35,000 feet. Boeing built the F-101 Voodoo, a fighter bomber that was the first to reach Mach 1.0. However, the Strategic Air Command withdrew from the XF-88 project as a result of the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress, a long-range strategic bomber propelled by subsonic jets. The Voodoo was nevertheless used by the Tactical Air Command as a fighter bomber to accomplish strategic goals. After design flaws were resolved in 1955, production started up again in 1956. For use in combat, interception, bombing, and reconnaissance, many F-101 Voodoo variants were developed. The Voodoo saw significant action during the Vietnam War and the Cuban Missile Crisis, despite not being tested in combat during the Korean War. No commercial model was ever made, and the XF-88 never left the testing grounds. As one of the first non-research aircraft to attain speeds exceeding Mach 1, the prototype nonetheless made aviation history. The F-101 Voodoo and its variations, which carried on its heritage, were worthy heirs and significant milestones in the development of aircraft capable of flying faster than Mach 1.